Hello, everyone. Thanks for attending this session. It's about spy memory support in Linux and U-Boot. Um, let me introduce myself. I'm Mikkel. I'm working at uh, Bootlin. We do kind of stuff, training. And as part of this job, I've been involved in the port of uh, the spy memory framework in U-Boot. And that's what I'm talking about today. So this is my second talk about the MTD subsystem. Um, this is pretty much how I feel now that I know other subsystems. Hopefully, having such contributions like the creation of this uh, spy memory framework will improve things, but we are not there yet. So this talk uh, is about spy memories. I will start with uh, the spy bus, uh, what has changed to support uh, the storage over spy buses, um, and how we do, how we support it in Linux and Ubuntu, and maybe getting feedback from users if there are any in this room. So let's start small with the spy bus. It's a four-wire bus, as you know. Uh, there is one chip select uh, per device, one clock, and two data lines. One from the master to the slave, one from the slave to the master, which means it's a full duplex protocol. It runs at 10 megahertz, which for me is really, is really high. Uh, NVMe people will say it's incredibly slow, but uh, for us it's quite okay in the embedded world. Um, Spy is good, but for storage it wasn't, uh, it wasn't enough. So people uh, starting uh, thinking how we can improve the throughput. First solution is to increase the, the clock, of course. So now we can see buses running at uh, 100 megahertz. The second solution is to increase um, the number of IO lanes, data IO lanes. Uh, so now we know we have a dual spy, quad spy, and octal spy. And of course, uh, you can double the rate with a uh, the double data rate mode when you sample both on the rising edge and the falling edge of the clock. Of course, all of this comes with an extra cost, and it's a bit more complex to handle. The fact that we use dual quad or octo modes uh, means the protocol is now half duplex, uh, not full duplex anymore. Um, the number of IO lines is device specific, and there is a negotiation between the, uh, the spy controller and the, between the master and the slave. This is the spy memory protocol. So it's made of uh, different cycles, uh, opcode, address cycles, dummy cycles, and data in or data out cycles. Uh, this is pretty standard. Um, all of this makes spy memory commands. This is the basics of uh, um, an exchange with a spy memory. The opcode that is at the, uh, at the beginning uh, will determine what's after. If there is another opcode, either there are uh, address bytes, maybe dummy bytes or data, byte, data, data bytes, and if yes, how many? Uh, this is the generic part of the spy memory protocol. Of course, the command set are different. What's in the cycles? Uh, we, know, we now know about the spinand and spino um, command sets. It might have other ones. Uh, what's pretty standard here is the fact that we need to read, write, erase, um, access internal re registers. Um, there, there are two uh, registers that are pretty standard. Uh, actually, I don't think there is a, a real specification around this, but for now we've only seen chips uh, following this, so this is great. Please, guys, continue like this. And of course, vendors can add, add their own opcodes if they want to add some features to their chips. This is an example of a read. Um, with a NOR, it's Pretty straightforward. Uh, it's just one command and one opcode, three address bytes, and then the data you want to read. With NANDs, it's always more complicated with NANDs. You know, you can't read byte per byte. You have to, to read a, a page, which is usually 2K, 4K, it depends. Uh, 
So first, you have to read an entire page and put it in cache. During this time, you will pull a status register until the operation is done. And once this is done, you can actually read the data from the cache in the spine and chip. So this is the theory. Uh, let's see how it's handled in Linux first. Initially, spy memories were handled like, was well, supported like any other devices with uh, drivers in drivers slash MTD slash uh, devices. Uh, they were made of regular spy messages and spy transfers. And it worked great until uh, we People, people uh, used more advanced spy controllers that can do higher throughputs and optimize things. So a Spinor subsystem was created and to handle the Spinor command set. And the, the spy control drivers, the advanced ones, could implement the Spinor interface. Okay? So this, is, uh, this was uh, the stack at this time. Uh, you had Spinor controller drivers uh, just dealing with hardware and the Spinor framework with the, um, dealing with the no Spinor command set. Of course, for regular spy controllers, uh, people wrote uh, a specific, a generic driver which is called N25P80. It's an awful name for this because it's used for much more than one single controller. But it basically translates uh, what's given by the Spinal framework into something understandable by the SPI framework. So this worked great until people started adding SPINANT. Um, you have to know that SPI memory controllers, SPI controllers, and those who have these advanced features do not care about what's uh, in the opcodes. They are memory agnostic. So one solution could have been to write another span, spine and stack, uh, like this one, but beside. But this would have duplicated a lot of code, uh, because the underlying hardware is the same. So the, the solution that has been brought was to use, instead of use the spy uh, framework, was to use the spy, uh, spy memory framework, a new one. Um, on top of it, the spy and framework was added, pretty much like the spy and framework and the M25P80 driver. And that's our example from uh, the beginning with a read, uh, uh, within a read attempt. So a user tries to read an MTD device from user space. It goes through the MTD framework. And then, depending on the underlying uh, chip, it will go through the spinal framework or spinal framework. This one will handle the command set. So we'll translate the read request into the spy memory operations. And the spy mem framework will act as a sync. And check if the spy controller drivers can handle such optimized um, IOs. There is, um, there is a hook which is called uh, supported op. And if yes, we'll call the hook exec op, which is implemented by this driver, uh, to send, uh, actually send the data to the spy chip, spy flash. Uh, if the driver cannot handle the operation, the spy memory framework will know it thanks to the support of uh, hook and will fall back to regular spy transfers. That's all for Linux. So what about Uboot now? Well, I've been involved in migrating the spy memory uh, framework and the spy and framework to Uboot, from Linux to Uboot. We needed a bit of redesign because Uboot used internally uh, its own glue about uh, around the MTD devices. Um, yeah, we spent some time cleaning all of this and also re rewriting a bit um, how to handle partitions. Actually, the partition work is not even mainlined in Linux. I need to find some time to do it. 
so now you have uh, entity devices having parents until uh, there is no more partitions and we are on the actual entity device, which is a, the real physical one. All this work has been merged in the RC2, the last RC2, uh, because we've been a bit late uh, thanks to Travis uh, CI. Uh, we had some troubles getting all the configurations work. So Tom Rini accepted to merge this work a bit later than, than the merge window. But you, it's mainline now and you can try it. So this was the internal stuff in your boot, but from a user perspective, you need to interact with your device. There were three, there are three commands to do that, uh, SF or SpyFlash, NAND and when NAND. And also the MTD parts command, actually. Uh, the question was, shall we add a SpyNAND command now? And the answer is no, because we trimmed all this internal glue to use most of the MTD stack, and there is no real reason to not use the abstraction of the MTD layer. So instead we wrote an MTD command, which should deprecate, deprecate the three other commands at the top. And it acts almost like them, there is an help you can have a look at. Uh, for people handling partitions, that was a question that was asked to me a few times. The MTD parts command will be deprecated, not the, de not the MTD parts variable. You can still define your, your partitions there because it will still be used by, by Linux if you put it in the, in the command line. Uh, but now, anytime you will use the MTD command to read or write uh, your devices, it will check if uh, the MTD parts and or MTD ID variables have changed, and if yes, it will automatically update the MTD partitions before doing the real job you asked for. So what's next? In the future, we would like to support um, direct mapping. Uh, it would be a, a great feature to have, and it would even allow to execute in place code from spine and chips, by no chips, I'm sorry. Um, we should convert all the spine uh, controllers, sp uh, these controllers in the red, uh, in the red uh, thing before. Uh, it's part of the past, we don't want to see them anymore, and now they should be migrated to use the spine memory framework. And of course, try not to reproduce our previous mistakes, stay memory agnostic, do not mix everything. Uh, uh, just a few words about uh, the direct mapping. You can create a DMAP object, and uh, it will appear like regular memory for you. You can, have a, you can do DMAP read or write on it. Um, if your controller supports it, it would automatically do the, the spy memory operations on the spy bus and access the spy non, device, spy non or not device. And uh, it would be transparent for you. So now what's in the pipe for the spy nor side? Um, it was recently added the non-uniform array sizes. Uh, I know some spine and controllers are being migrated, like the Atmel and micro Microchip one and the Freescale uh, spine or controllers. The direct mapping API, of course. And uh, the M25P80 drivers I talked about before is being renamed to be something more generic, like uh, spy nordc which is much more meaningful for us. This is for Spino. For Spino now, uh, we have the same problematic about uh, the map API, of course. Uh, what's missing? The support for on flash uh, bad block table. Right now, we rely on the bad block markers. So it would be great to have a on flash bad block table uh, like with parallel nands. There is an on fee page, parameter page in some chips. We don't read it, maybe we could uh, optimize some things. 
And the ECC engine, there is no generic ECC engine block right now uh, for spine on chips. We can only um, use chips with only ECC. Otherwise, it will not work right now with this framework. But yeah, it would be great to have it, for instance, to have a software ECC running on your SOC. And adding support for new chips is something we are looking for. So if you are already using spine on chips, please contribute. Uh, the, the drivers for these chips are really small. And anyway, if you're using the MT29F driver, Spinon driver, it's going to be removed uh, anytime soon, uh, probably in the next release. So you really should migrate to this, um, to this new framework. Um, yeah, that's all for me. Thank you for your attention. Now, if you have any questions, I'd be pleased to answer them. There are microphones. Hi. Um, in our products, we are using some fancy um, NOR SPI chips from Spansion. They have, a, they have two dies inside one package. Yes. Which is, as the U-Boot version that we are using is 2017.1, which is not supported officially. Is there any plan to support those fancy configurations in newer versions of U-Boot? Because there are a lot of patches around, yeah. but none of them has been mainlined. Preferably, the patches are from Xilinx because they are the only vendor who support those chips in their SOCs. Uh, I know on U-Boot some work has been delayed because of uh, internal changes. Uh, we discussed a lot with uh, Yagan, we, with the uh, U-Boot spy maintainer. And uh, I can't answer you right now. I think maybe Marek is here and can... No, I don't know where he is. Well, uh, I can have an answer right now with this. But uh, you can ping maybe Yagan, who is working as a maintainer for in this area. OK, thank you. Uh, any other question? No? OK, well, thank you.